friends of YouTube. Welcome again and today we're gonna to do a delicious southern style chicken pie. For the dough we are gonna use the recipe that we have at Chef Jacques apple pie uh, so I don't repeat myself. I will show you to shape the pie a little bit differently with the border this time since we're not gonna put a top on pie. It's gonna be an open face pie. Without further ado, let's have fun and bake. So we're gonna start with the rolling that dough. We're gonna spray the aluminum pan. Now you see these, by the way, even though they are a disposable pan, I'll reuse them quite a few times actually until they fall apart. It's a little more ecological that way. And after that, they still get clean and recycle the aluminum is an easy item to recycle. Or you can have the aluminum pan uh, more durable that sticker material and use those as well. Now about to roll the dough now. I got my trusted dusting flour right here. And the pie dough that I already made ahead of time. Just pre-shape it roughly in a circle. Dust flour on top and roll it. It's gonna be a little bit larger than the size of the pan. If you already made that apple pie, you'll know that that dough works very well. You see those little flakes of butter in there? That's going to make the dough nice and flaky. Don't allow the dough to stick, so just dust flour. Try to keep it as a circle as close as much as possible. That pie is an open face pie, so we just do a shell. Naturally, you can purchase that shell if you don't have time to make the dough and shape the dough. You probably find them in a freezer section of the grocery store but it's always fun to make your own about an eighth of an inch thick by the way I'm going to show you what not to use here do not bake in this pan it, this is lovely pipe glass problem with this the heat is not going to really go through the glass well to bake the dough uh, nicely so bake in a thin thinner metal more conducive for the heat as opposed to uh, the glass. Now this will be good after you're done to take it off there and put it as a presentation and to slice it in here, that, that would be great. Now, we're gonna do the rolling pin trick, not stretching. Just place it, adjust it, and while this is happening, I'm going to uh, start preheating the oven to 375. Preheat while I'm getting the rest of the stuff done. Shape it, and I'm going to make a little border here. Fold it over, maybe a quarter inch tall with some of that excess dough. If you have too much excess, you may want to trim some of it. With a pair of scissors, you don't want too, too much of that dough on top. About a quarter inch, kind of fairly even. Once you get it nice and even, we're gonna make a little design here, like this, with two fingers. Again, so it doesn't bubble up and, and would spill all the product before it has time to coagulate. And that is your shell. Now we're gonna work on the filling. I have everything pre-weighed right here, what's listed in the description. I have the eggs in a larger bowl and I have all the other ingredients. We have the pieces of pecan that's gonna go into the mix right here, they'll be chopped up. You can take your half, so you can take pieces. Pieces generally ought to be uh, less expensive than half, so you may want to buy both or whatever, you, you have options. Those for mixing and uh, add flavor and texture to the actual filling. We got your two cone syrup here, the light cone syrup and the dark cone syrup right here, right? And we have the granulated sugar here, and I got the vanilla into the melted butter. I'm going to warm up the melted butter just a little bit, 30 seconds in the microwave to make sure it's nice and liquid and ready to go. So when I measured the vanilla, 
extract, I put it in the butter so I don't have to get another container and waste some of the product. But by the way, I just wanted to mention the reason I put these eggs in a bigger mixing bowl because that's the first thing I'm gonna be uh, pre-mixing and then I'm gonna add everything in there in that bowl. So I, I didn't want to put the eggs in a smaller bowl just to have it and, and, and then transfer it. So that's the reason why the eggs are sitting in uh, the first item that goes into the procedure, sitting in a larger bowl so we save time. Now I'm gonna put the both corn syrup in a saucepan and Bring them to a boil for a few minutes to three minutes. Some people blind bake somewhat the shell for the chapai. I do not do that. It's just in the control of your, the pan you use, the heat of your oven, the timing, all this. You can totally avoid to pot bake your shell. Sometimes when you pot bake your shell, that shell cracks some. And then when you try to put a liquid filling in it, then you have some other issues. Okay, so now I will add the sugar as well with the corn syrup and basically that will allow everything to blend well and the sugar to dissolve well prior to getting introduced into the rest of the mixture. You see how it, it, this has a texture of honey? That's going to ensure a good, smooth, sweet, gooey mess right here. Mmm, lovely, tasty. Okay, it's start, starting boiling. Nice golden color. You notice that I use a little bit more of the white corn syrup as opposed to the dark. I don't want the, the filling to be too, too dark. It's just a preference. You could do half and half. Here it is boiling now. So now I'm gonna reduce the heat. Stay with it so it doesn't boil over. To let it cook a little bit and all these ingredients will blend together and all that vanilla and sugar will be totally nice and melted. Couple of minutes, then we're gonna let it Cool down some before we can incorporate that to the other element. Look at this beauty. Hmm? Beautiful. Look at those pretty bubbles. Mm, it smells so good. All right, I'm turning it off now. Set it aside and let it cool down. If you do not want to wait for your mixture to cool down, you can just do this here. And uh, this is called an ice bath ice and water, you can really accelerate the cooling process and you're not trying to get it cold, just cool down the temperature so it will not cook the eggs. So it can be still a little warm, no problem. Don't get it too cold or it'll get too hard and sticky. That should do it. Just a, a few seconds stirring in ice cold water will bring it to the temperature we need. We also have uh, to chop up the nuts, use a chef knife. Just uh, now, that's one way to do it. If you got skills with your chef knife, the other way you can put them in a Ziploc bag and hit them with a mallet, a flat mallet kind of thing, to crumble them, and that's it. So, so you don't have big pieces of pecan. That's for the filling. So we just, uh, there's a few big pieces here that I still wanted to get a little smaller. That's it. And we'll get the nice half pieces of pecan for the top of the pie. And now we are about to do, do the mixing, the mixture for the pie. The oven is preheated to 375 degrees. I'm, I'm gonna place the pie on a half sheet pan again. It's a thin, fairly thin uh, metal, so the, the heat will be conducted nicely. But in the event that there would be a leak, I want it to be in a pan, not in the oven. Now I have the eggs here and all the other ingredients. I got my melted butter with the vanilla right here and I have the syrup mixture. We're gonna lightly beat the eggs with a whisk. Of course you could use a fork. You could use two chopsticks. We got that here, the syrup mixture. Now you understand why you didn't want this hot or you would get instant scrambled eggs. I'm gonna use the spatula here. Someday I will do some research and development for a pecan pie using less or not at all corn syrup to see something that still has somewhat of the same texture and feel. The melted butter with the vanilla. And last we're gonna add the chopped pecans. Pecans, pecans, 
depending on where you're from. And we're gonna pour the mixture in the pie shell. Notice that it is nice and full. Always use a rubber spatula to get every ounce of product. You don't want to feed the sink. You want all that goodness to go into yours or someone else's belly. There we go. So that looks pretty good as it is. We're gonna try to make it look even better and taste better. It's not all about looks. So there's still a little bit of room here. You'll see why we did that little border and about half an inch border. It was a quarter inch by the time we shape it, about half an inch. That will shrink a little bit. And now we're gonna take some nice looking pecans and we're gonna give it the money, as we say in the in the bees now you do not need to do that so if you don't do that or let's say that you're working with just pieces become pieces you would at least double uh, another way i've done it is you you don't you, you take bigger pieces of pecan and then you cover the bottom of the pie with the pieces of pecan then you pour the mixture that we did and then your pieces will come up to the surface as you can see here the way i i have it we got double goodness. You got some flavor that's released in there within the filling and you have extra nice pecan halves for the garnish. And you can set your the pieces that you're not using, you can set them up, you reserve them for the next batch that you will chop up. Because even when you purchase halves, you always will have broken pieces in the half. These are lovely, lovely, flavorful pecan halves. They're really, really good. So it takes a little bit longer, obviously, to do this this way, but you do not have to do, if you do more production, you don't have to do that. That will definitely add a cost to your pecan pie. to do to go through this but I thought it would be nice to show you that you really can make it look very attractive add the cha-ching add value to the pie by giving that extra presentation so this is why the measure we don't have an exact measure we say another extra cup whatever but whatever it takes since you you got to pick and choose so you really cannot measure it just uh, pick all your stash of pecan house. And as you come to the center, you may want to pick some smaller ones to be able to make a crown with smaller, one, uh, smaller ones. Isn't that lovely? That's the fun of baking right there. You're gonna impress your family, you're gonna impress your neighbors. You're gonna impress me when you send me a picture of it. Look at this, wow. Okay, and it's not even baked yet. Not even baked yet. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Let's place that puppy on a half sheet pan. Right there, in case there's a little leakage. To increase it 75 for 30 minutes. And then I'll turn down the oven to allow the crust to bake without the pie to burn. Remember it's a custard, so you don't want too hot an oven, but you also want it hot enough to bake the crust. So. 30 minutes on a hotter to kind of really get the uh, pie crust going and then turn it down, finish it, maybe another 20 minutes at the lower temperature. All right, so here it is, you see, uh, it has deflated a little bit and it's looking beautiful. It's, your pie is done, it's fully set and it smells wonderful. Now, uh, I mentioned something earlier about not baking it in this pan because this is not conductive to bake the crust well. So let's see how we're gonna flip it upside down now. It's been cooling on a cooling rack. I always like to use a cooling rack. 
you do not cool it on a cooling rack, any big product, you sit it on a countertop, it heats up the countertop and it keeps uh, the heat a long time. So you want, you want the heat to get off your product as quickly as possible. That's why you use the cooling rack so the, heat, the air circulates and you don't make a big block of heat that uh, takes much longer to cool down. Uh, I don't like to put my baking product in a cooler to try first of all, you, uh, a, especially a non-commercial cooler, that would be bad because it would heat up the cooler. Uh, and the other reason is I don't want the humidity from the refrigerator to interfere with the good freshness of a baked product. All right, so I will do what I was mentioning to you. You can use another pie tin and you can do this. We're gonna flip it upside down. It's still kind of hot, okay? You could wait longer, but in this case, and you see here, there was a little bubble here. There's a little bit of an area here for some reason that uh, was not baked as much as the rest, but you see how they cross these bake nicely. Yeah, look at this color, right? So except for that little spot for some reason here. So now we're gonna put it into the presentation tin and we're gonna flip it back carefully, flip it back, and now it's re ready to be presented nicely, nicer than, than is uh, kind of like reusable, disposable tin, and here it is, right? And also, when you cut into it, you're not gonna damage your your uh, disposable pan that you can reuse and reuse and be friendly to the environment, okay? So here we are. We're gonna now have a little test test. It's still a little warm, but uh, we want to do this and we're gonna take a piece, a slice, because the looks is a good thing, but we also wanna make sure that it tastes great. Cut through a portion. So you see by, by cutting it this way, there we go. Oh yes, mm, look at that, nice and creamy, okay, it's, it's set, and now, look at that creaminess, really nice, and we are going to test this thing, oh, mmm, pecan, pecan pie, Chef Jacques way. Oh, mmm, creamy. The pecans are toasted just right, crispy, and the flakiness of the puff pastry. Mm, let, 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 let. Hear that, hear that crispiness of the puff pastry. It's like, look, 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 oh, look at this, look, 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 the flakiness of the puff pastry. Can you see that camera? Can you see that? Mm. Oh, can you get that close up on the, that flakiness? Oh, mm. oh. Mm. I'm surely going to have to go out and smoke a cigarette. And I'm not even a smoker. Mm. Bravo Tim, bravo. Excellent work. Make sure you subscribe if you like it and there'll be many more to come and uh, i hope you enjoy and let me know how it works for you okay and comment uh, i'll see you soon <laughs>